Hello and welcome to this episode of Spoiled Rotten, where we have a little bit of a spoilery-filled discussion, this time about the 2020 horror movie, The Lodge. There was something that kind of sprang to my mind when I was watching this, especially as it started wrapping up, and definitely for the several hours after I finished and this end credits rolled, and that was honestly something that Neil deGrasse Tyson was talking to Richard Dawkins about. Now, if you'll bear with me, I am going to get to a point with this, but I was thinking about the terrible nature of what we do to each other being so much worse than a lot of supernatural stories. I mentioned in my spoiler free review that the notion of everything being staged for the purposes of a spiteful revenge mind game by the kids was something that I had considered the possibility of that was what was going on. And the outcome of that was not surprising, but the continuation of it and the ramifications that that brought out was definitely surprising and horrifying. And it did elicit those thoughts about what we are capable of doing to each other. And unsurprisingly, once my mind goes down that road, it goes also towards Lars von Trier, who is just a master at developing movies that show the horrific nature of man versus man. Of course, Lars von Trier also being a very, let's just say, difficult personality who has a strong hatred of Americans, it makes his movies a little bit difficult to access. And the thing that I was thinking about as far as what Neil deGrasse Tyson was talking to Richard Dawkins about was a conversation that they were having, I think back in 2006 at a, uh, Observatory, and they were discussing atheism, as one would expect with Richard Dawkins. And deGrasse Tyson asked him in one of the most polished and professional ways that I've ever heard anybody say something about the lines of, your words are very, very keen, but they're also very barbed. And have you ever thought that maybe you could affect more people if they weren't quite so, so on and so forth? Basically saying, have you ever considered not being quite such a dick and maybe people will listen to you more? Just in the most polite, professional way possible. And that was something that got me thinking about, wouldn't that really kind of apply to Lars von Trier? And if it did, wouldn't we get a movie quite like The Lodge? I'd be lying if I said I really have too much of a point to that. It was just something that I thought about and welcome to Mike's brain, I guess. Regardless, uh, I thought it was an interesting character study in terms of this movie as far as there not really being any right characters. Nobody is morally justified in anything that they did at all. Of course, one could argue that the mother was not necessarily justified in her decision making, but perhaps forgiven in some sense and honestly, I, that's a very complex topic with a lot of sensibilities and it's one of those things where I would prefer to have it with professionals. Professionals in their field in terms of psychiatry, mental health, and depression. Because uh, I am just not qualified to comment on that. There are people that say it's selfish. There are people that say it's selfless. Suffice it to say, I say if you are feeling to that degree about any sort of despair, depression, anxiety, anything along those lines and you have harmful thoughts, please reach out. You're not alone. There is help out there. I know that the times are tough right now. And while we're discussing this kind of topic, it kind of bears repeating that please reach out. But just strictly speaking in terms of this particular character with these particular circumstances and this particular story, whether or not there was any kind of justification for her actions would be something that would need to be discussed in more of a round table fashion. Uh, it's just, it's beyond what I'm comfortable doing here. But as far as the father taking the kids and putting everybody in the deep end of the pool together, I think it was just one of the most irresponsible things I've ever seen beyond when he skedaddled out of there. At that point, everybody's getting packed up and everybody's getting dispersed while he can take care of what he needs to, but he really needed to have been the mediator, especially in such a tense and vital situation. The first real enclosed box situation of a relationship forming, especially one as contentious as this, really needed to be w approached with oversight and mediation. And if he wasn't able to provide that, it should not have happened. And the emergency stop button should have been fucking pressed. It's also a difficult blanket statement to say that it's all the kid's fault either. True, they might have been the catalyst for a mental break of Grace because she's already in a mentally fragile state and then depriving her of her medication. Yes, it might have definitely been the catalyst, but I don't think that they had the full understanding of the situation as it currently was. Aiden might have had some semblance of 
the fragility of Grace's mental state, but I don't think to quite the extent that he expected, and he didn't really have the nuanced understanding that an adult might have, and honestly, a lot of adults don't fucking have this, in terms of deprogramming a cult-like mentality and the effects that that has down the road in terms of manipulating it for God knows what reason. So catalyst, yeah. Reason, yeah. Blame, I don't know about that. I think that's worthy of discussion. I think if there was one person that I could actually attribute full blame to, not necessarily full blame in the entire overarching of the situation, but simply the person that had the most emotional and mental wherewithal to anticipate uh, issues and prevent them from happening was the father. And I guess the only other topic that I really want to hit with this is that ending. Holy shit, what a way for the end credits to roll. I think that that was masterful. I mean, on one hand, it encourages a level of discussion about, you know, do you think that the kids got away? Do you think that they survived? Do you think what happened happened? And so on and so forth. But at the same time, if the kids didn't survive, I think it also lends a certain level of a powerful impact in terms of not showing that. All we know is that there's two kids, there's two bullets, and that's the end of the story. And anything is shown after that would just be gratuitous and superfluous. So I really, really loved how it stopped right there. I think that that was a bold move and I was very much on board for it. I can see how maybe it would be contentious. I haven't actually looked at anybody else's reviews of this one because I've been waiting to watch it myself. But I'd be curious to find out if it actually is contentious or not, if people really didn't like the ending. But me personally, I thought it had a hell of a punch, way more than if we actually had shown the kids' faces being blown off by grace. Instead of impacting me in my eyeballs, it impacted me in my heart. So I think that's really about all I really have to say on this one. I'd be interested to hear what your thoughts are. I would love uh, discussion and comments and so forth. I would love to be able to respond to them as I have time. Uh, but uh, I think that should about wrap this up. I really thank you for joining me here on this special episode of Spoiled Rotten. Thank you very much.